Hello there, welcome to Election Brief. Coming up, Supreme Court blocks four civil society organizations from joining voters' register case as it says tomorrow, June 25, to deliver its judgments. While we have details from the court, we'll hear from one of the plaintiffs. Electoral areas in the Quadraso constituency prepare to wrap up polls as delegates turn up to cast their ballot. They will be live on the ground. An MP for Oda, who lost his bid to run on the ticket of the governing New Patriotic Party in the just-ended parliamentary primaries, has blamed his defeat on some Kotoku chiefs in the area. And it played in my area. So I knew about it, but I thought that the delegates would rise up above that. They didn't, and they have done it. I come from a very small area. Well, all of that coming up and more here on your election headquarters. It's Election Brief with me, Mama Viu Swabwadi. Now, the Supreme Court, a short while ago, declined a request by four civil society organizations, including policy think tank Imani Africa, to allow them to join the cases against the voters register compilation. The seven-member panel held that the application is not supported by law. The groups had argued that they had information which could assist the court in its determination of the matter. But the court disagreed. My colleague Joseph Akable was in court. He joins us. Uh, with some more details uh, in a bit. Well, do I have Joseph joining us? Okay, Joseph will join us in a bit for more on this particular story. Stay with us. It seemed quite clear, and you would have better served your interest if you had just joined any of the parties instead of coming in as a friend of the courts. Well, the suggestion that we should have made the, we should have joined the case uh, is well taken. But the point also is that where, what, what does that mean for an amicus? You know, I mean, in other jurisdictions, people, people file amicus cases anyway, and they take positions. Um, we do have an interest in the matter. I mean, to, I suspect that that is why we actually decided to file the brief. So to suggest that the brief was not, was not neutral, I don't understand the language. Um, I think they probably didn't even read anything, but anyway, they made their decisions, and we can live with that. Is this the end of the road for you in terms of your activism related to this particular Well, this is a country of law and order. I would think that the courts have decided what they have to decide. It doesn't stop us from activism. We'll keep on speaking about the matters, mm -hmm. because we think that these are critical matters of public policy. I think the courts have benefited soundly from sound public policy, but they chose differently. And so, well, here we are. Well, on the onset of this application, we did say that the, we were at the, 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 we were at the uh, benevolence, more or less, of the laws. And so what they decide to do, we'll live with it. Um, it's just that we are disappointed, though, that they didn't even consider the, the brief itself. Um, we think they would have benefited greatly from it. But, look, the laws have spoken, and uh, we can't quarrel with that. We just have to live with it. But I hope that the decisions they arrive at eventually would be the decision that everybody can live with in this country. Otherwise, I'm, I'm just disappointed. I think my colleagues here are equally disappointed. Um, this was an introduction to how cases are determined in court. I was quite out. I mean, at some point I was laughing or two. Um, but I guess lawyers know their trade, and the judges also know their trade. And that's President of Imani uh, Africa, Franklin Kujo, uh, reacting to the Supreme Court's de decision. But let's get Joseph Akable to give us some more details. Joseph, we know about Imani Africa. Obviously, Franklin Kujo has reacted. Tell us about the other three CSOs. And so the other CSOs uh, include uh, the Conservative Policy Research Center, uh, the Institute for Liberty and Policy Innovation, and the Alliance for Social Equity and Public Accountability, as we refer to them. Uh, so they, together with Imani Africa, took this matter uh, to the Supreme Court, filing the amicus brief and asking that they be allowed the opportunity to 
uh, come into the case as friends of the court to assist it with uh, information that they believe could help the court arrive at a conclusion, insisting that they were uh, persons who uh, were citizens who were obviously be affected by the decision of the court. We understand the court had some concerns, including describing them as not being neutral. We had Franklin react to that. Explain that to us. Uh, that comment came from Justice Paul Bafoboni, a member of the panel. Uh, it was after uh, some questions had been asked of the lawyer as to whether he had read the two cases that had been filed earlier. Uh, he responded that he had not read the rates, but had read some affidavits relating to the two cases. And so the Chief Justice had made a point that, I mean, if you've not read the two cases, how do you know, uh, how, how do you conclude that the information you are coming to give to us is new information? that could assist us. It was at a point that Justice Bafoboni came in to uh, say that, I mean, they've been, they know Imani quite well, they know what the CSS have been up to and they are commenting on the issue. And he thinks that they are not neutral in this particular matter and they have a position and they support a certain party, as in party in the sense of a side in the case that is before the court. And uh, he thinks they would have served their interests better if they had simply joined them uh, when they brought the matter to the court rather than come acting as though they are friends of the court coming in to assist the court. And he said, you are not mutual, he stated. Mm. Joseph, stay with me uh, for, for a while. Let me get uh, Franklin Kujo, who's just also joined us via Zoom, uh, on. Mr. Franklin Kujo, thank you very much for your time. We had your reaction a bit later on as you spoke to uh, pressmen after uh, the court's decision. So what's the way forward? Uh, how are you moving forward from here? <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I think we would continue with our advocacy. I think it was a thoroughly disappointing ruling. References to neutrality were not the were a bit classless because I thought that the issues around amicus is that you have an interest in the matter. And this this example is littered all over the globe. I mean, in the recent case of Dhaka in the United States, there were as many as 125 amicus uh, briefs that were filed by interested parties. So I don't know where that was coming from. But as I said already, even before the case began, we said we'll, we'll live with it. I mean, we know that um, our courts are not that bold. And so somehow it was a bit disappointing not to even allow the brief in the first place. I did not understand what, what neutrality meant in this case. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we'll continue the advocacy. We plan to continue on the sidelines and actually take the whole... Um, What's it called? The attorney, Deputy Attorney General's remarks about the bloatedness of the register um, to, to town with a lot of uh, useful evidence that we, we did think that it would have helped the court, but of course mm. they decided otherwise. I think they've already made up their minds anyway. Otherwise, oh. what's the point anyway? We knew that um, we would either be accepted or dismissed. So, um, like I said, it was uh, one interesting comedy that I witnessed. I mean, I never knew that. The way court treats the lawyers sometimes can be very profound, but also quite interesting. Mm. So the way forward is to continue our advocacy. This matter isn't rested. We are going to delve deeper into it. We'll publish our briefs, by the way, so that people will read it and know that there was some substantial amount of new evidence that we had propound, mm. we have proposed. So that's what we'll do. Um, great, but does it mean advocacy is all you have left now? What would that achieve? Well, I mean, to the extent that the the brief was not even accepted in the first place, the, the rational line of uh, the course of action is to publicize the brief as much as we can, so that people would appreciate that there was some newness to the to the issues we've been advocating. And indeed, as uh, one of the judges obviously commented, that they knew and they've been following our advocacy. So we hope that they continue listening. I know it won't change their minds, but to the extent that they'll be listening, that, that's useful. And uh, we think we can take it further beyond the court. I uh, suspect that many discerning minds as well would also read a brief and make up their minds. That's all we can do. It's a law and order society. So you can shout and cry, but at the end of the day, uh, judicial power is judicial power. They spoke it. And mm. uh, we'll live with, we can live with it. I sure. only hope that tomorrow's decision will, can be lived with by everybody. Mm. Uh, Mr. Kujo, before I let you go, we know that you also petitioned the Otun Fosse to the second. Ha have you received a any uh, reactions, any feedback from him? 
Well, we went to make a full presentation to the Sentiment Council on the vexed issues as well. And they did say that they were going to call the EC and then speak to the EC. So that's where we left it at. I haven't heard anything yet. Um, but I wasn't, we were not obviously oblivious of the fact that we made an impression on them. It was a two hour conversation with uh, QA, um, which, which was quite refined and quite orderly. Um, yeah, it wasn't the one we experienced today. Why were dismissed almost <laughs> without any proper interrogation of the case? And it was rather sober, great. You sound dis disappointed, Mr. Kuju, but we have to leave you here and uh, see how uh, this. Uh, that's fine, I'm grateful. Mm. Thank All right. Franklin Kujo there, he's president of Imani Africa. Now let's turn our attention to the Ashanti region and to the Kwadaso constituency where voting by delegate of the New Patriotic Party is still ongoing. Parliamentary primaries of the NPP had to be postponed there to today due to contention of the voter registered there. Our latest checks will show that uh, the electoral areas in the constituency are preparing to wrap up. Let's get on the ground now and speak to my colleague, who's got uh, the very latest uh, for us. Nanayao Jima is joining us. He's been monitoring today's exercise. Nanayao, first of all, remind us uh, the aspirants contesting in this particular uh, seat. So, so there are three people contesting for the seat here in the Kwadaso constituency. Namely, they are SK Nyama, who is the incumbent member of parliament for Kwadaso constituency. We have Vincent from Pomenu, who is contesting him, and he is the deputy CEO of the Middle Belt Development Authority. And finally, we have Dr. Kinsley Nyako, who, who is also contesting for the seat here in Kwadaso constituency. Not long ago, exactly at 1 p.m., voting ended, and from, from there, since then, it's been counting of the ballots cast here today, and currently, I'm here at the coalition center, which is the Quad uh, so Methodist Retreat Center, and presently we have eight ballot boxes or eight polling stations who have submitted their ballot boxes here, and we are waiting for the extra to to bring them in so that the electoral commission can put them together and declare winner of the election. But before you are able to get access here, outside there are several delegates some, some most of them ha had the opportunity to vote in today's elections because some also were denied um access or some of them were disenfranchised because according to them their names were not found in the voter album the, their names were not found in the voter album because according to um the the, the According to party officials, they, they had their names uh, deleted mm. due to the fact that they've changed their voter register here. Okay. So there's a different voter register that they are using for today's exercise. But presently, um, outside, outside are teaming supporters of Dr. King's Linyakun. And according to them, per the results they've collated, they are... Their, their, their candidate has emerged winner of the elections, but we are waiting for the Electoral Commission to, to declare who actually won the elections. But for what the results we have now, it, it's possible that the incumbent um, has been unseated by Dr. Kinslinyako by at least 50 votes here. Okay. All right, uh, so Nanaya Ojima, we wait for that counting to begin and the declaration made. Nanaya Ojima, my colleague there, uh, observing the process in Kwadaso in the Ashanti region. Well, the information is that voting is done, counting is yet to begin, and we will let you know the outcome of that exercise. Moving on, the MP for Oda, William Kwetu, who lost his bid to run on the ticket of the NPP in the just ended parliamentary primaries, has blamed his defeat on some Kotoku chiefs in the area. The chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Education told journalists in Parliament that the chiefs wanted one of their tribesmen to occupy the seat. He also accused some senior politicians of assisting the chiefs in ousting him. You know, there are several factors that comes into play when uh, you're looking for a candidate to represent a group. One key factor is the tribal sentiment. And it played in my area. So I knew about it, but I thought that the delegates will rise up above that. They didn't. 
and they have done it. I come from a very small area called Jadem, only three polling stations to be an MP. And that is what they played, and it worked out. So I accept their decision. Me. Mm. What, really, what really happened was that even last four years, I know a number of chiefs called some big men there and told them that, look, from 1992, we have not had our own son, our own representing us. We want somebody to represent us. So they went for a search. The person they had to come and contest me, uh, to, to them, wasn't too good. And that is why he lost. But this time, this person was, of course, uh, somewhat OK for them. And they could do people treat their way behind him. I mean, we look at what happened, the number of people who came there, their businessmen, everybody coming to support him. Yes, of course. I mean, I'm alone from so that. So the chiefs did play a role again in that? Yes, yes, seriously. That, they, they won the seat. And then the senior politician, they took the seat from me. They won their own to lead the constituency, and that's all. But, 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 but yes. did money play any role? Money play any role? Yeah, we all spent money. I mean, people wanted me to come back. There are some big men here. I cannot mention their name here. They all helped me. They paid money, I paid money. Okay? But of course, they paid more than me. Well, William Kwetu, however, says his loss will not affect his work in Parliament. Well, not, not really. I mean, some were protected. I understand I cannot compare myself to someone like Deputy Speaker, if he was protected. Okay? And other people, I cannot do that. Do you merit protection? Well, our party doesn't normally do that. And so I wasn't expecting it. The only thing they could do is to support me. And they did that by giving me the money. The money I spent, huge amount of money. It wasn't my money. People supported me. And I did spend it. I spent it. It didn't work out. They also spent... How much was involved? That cannot be mentioned here. How would this affect your work going forward? As chairman for education committee? No, I have a number of bills to do. I'll do them before I leave parliament. There were four or five bills. I'll do them before I leave parliament. That's are you I mean. demoralized? Not at all. Not at all. You are sad? No. <laughs> you want to serve people and they say, and they say no, we... we we don't want you to serve us again. Why should you be sad? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a technical person. Those who, none of them. Who expect a well, pressmen there trying so hard to push a man who just lost an election. Now, Deputy Minister of Communications, Mr. George Ander, has rejected, uh, rejected claims that he bribed delegates of Iwutu Senior West to re-elect him in the just-ended parliamentary primaries. We've got details of this on myjoyonline.com. That's where we have to end election brief today. Keep watching Joy News. We'll keep you updated on all our social media handles, including myjoyonline.com, on the exercise ongoing in Kwadaso. My name is Mama Vilsobwaje. Thanks for your company.